Father God, we are so thankful for your mercy. We're thankful for your compassion. It's because of those compassions that we were not consumed today. And Father, as we stand here in this place, we, are, uh, we have much gratitude, much thanks for providing us a place to worship, providing us a means to worship. God, bless those that have assembled themselves together. Father, we just pray, Lord God, this will be an re- encouraging word, a refreshing word, a word of encouragement, Father. Because, Lord, we know there's not much encouragement left in this world. We know that everywhere we turn, there's, there's bad news. But thanks be God, we got the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And let us be found faithful delivering that good news in the name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Amen. First Peter chapter 1. You know, I want to talk to you just a little bit tonight. Um, a subject that really um, is probably not just talked about enough in most churches. And one I don't think we could ever exalt or talk too much about. You know, sometimes it's, it's, we, we, we want to go deep, but sometimes you got to go back to the elementary things of the faith. Because if you don't grasp the elementary, you're not going to go on. Oh, you may have a lot of head knowledge, but it won't do you a lot of good. Amen? I mean, you can be in the trenches in a, in a, in a war and have all kinds of firearms, but if you ain't got some ammo to put in them, not going to do you a lot of good. Amen? First Peter chapter 1 and verse 18, are you there? For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Amen. I could close right there and say amen. Let's go home. I mean, my God, what else can you say? But Peter here calls it precious blood. He just didn't say any blood, the precious blood. Amen. You know, if you're thirsty, now that I brought that up, if you're thirsty, water's precious. Can you say amen? If you're hungry, food is precious. If you're broke, Money's precious, amen? But when you're lost, bound in sin, and can't get free, can't get clean, and can't redeem yourself, the blood of Jesus becomes precious. Sin makes the blood of Jesus Christ precious to you and I. Amen. It's precious because it has redeeming power. As I say, you, we couldn't save ourselves, amen? Most of you may, may or may not know, but Todd's here with us tonight, and he's my cousin. And uh, he was talking about how God delivered him, and, and how, you know, of course, God delivered me from alcohol. As a matter of fact, he and I had some excursions in times past together. Thank God that God spared us. Can you say amen? And... We were redeemed. Because I, I don't know about, I can't tell nobody else's testimony, but I remember many times hanging over the, hanging around the toilet bowl saying, God, if you get me through this one, I'll never do it again. Lying like a dog. I mean it at the time, I really did. I really did mean it. In those few moments I said it. I remember many times laying on the bed, one foot on the floor and saying, God, forgive me of my sins. And I meant it at the time, but I didn't understand there was a a redeeming power. I was honoring him with my lips, but my heart was far from him. The blood of Jesus is precious because it redeemed or it purchased us from from a a life of sin. We couldn't redeem ourselves. I've told this before, but I'll tell it again. I'm with the mic so I can tell it again. I was sitting in a restaurant one day, and and they gave me the napkin, and I took my pen out of my shirt, and I was just writing doodling on the napkin. 
And I kept writing, I love, I kept writing, I love Jesus, I heart Jesus. And the waiter come over and he saw my napkin. He said, he said, wait, what are you writing? And I just showed it to him. And he said, I love Jesus. He said, why do you love Jesus? I said, because he saved me. He said, saved you from what? I said, myself. I said, from myself. Because I was on the road to destruction and not, not necessarily, I'm talking that you don't have to be an alcoholic, a drug addict. If you were, if you were born on planet earth, you was on the road to destruction. You were lost. You were born with an Adamic nature. You were born in, into a kingdom of darkness. Can you say amen? You look at a baby and you say, well, how precious, how innocent. Yes, that's true. And, and like I say, until they reach an a age, a, a, an individual reaches an age as to where they can understand sin, and that could be different from... For, for different people. We can't say it's a certain age. Uh, I can't because I don't see it in the Bible. But bless God, when you know that you're lost, you better do something. It's time to do something. Can you say amen? The, the Bible <clears throat> makes it clear that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. It takes the blood. It's always been the blood. Amen? I like I say, some of this is just review. But sometimes you got to go back because we, we, we lose sight of things too many times. We see that from the very beginning in the garden. When Adam and Eve fell, God had an antidote. They, they tried to make aprons, or they did make aprons, they didn't try. They made aprons of fig leaves to try to cover their nakedness. And then they hid from God. And just for a side note, it's very interesting to me that when Adam sinned, that's when fear entered. He, Adam had never known about fear before. He said, when God called out to him, he said, Adam, where are you? He said, I'm hiding. Well, why are you hiding? Because I'm afraid. I don't understand why people want to pay money to go watch movies or sit and watch movies at home to get scared. Fear is of the devil. Amen. I can't understand. I was very careful. I got into trouble once before, but that ain't the first time. Yeah, I mean, I, my phone rang off a hook next day. Had all kinds of people leave the church. But it's still the truth. I ain't backing up what I said. But I can't understand why people pay good money to go be terrorized. Amen? My God. I don't get it. And, and the danger of that is you open yourself up to demonic activity. That's a good way to get demon-possessed. If maybe not possessed, but definitely oppressed. If you've ever dealt with fear, I can tell you know what oppression feels like. Can you say amen? But the, the, the blood of Jesus is precious because it has redeeming power. Like I say, if you could have saved yourself, you'd have done it. If you could have quit what you were doing, you'd have done it. Amen. Too many times husband promised her wives, I'll never do it again. And like I say, we really mean it at the time. But we couldn't help ourselves. Ladies, you couldn't help yourself. And we were not redeemed, as, as Peter said, with silver or gold. But with the precious blood of Jesus. It wasn't their vain conversations. It wasn't the religious talk. It wasn't the religious chatter. It wasn't the religious aesthetics and, and, and aerobics that you can do. It was the precious blood of of Jesus. Amen. He had the DNA of God. He is God in the flesh. Timothy, Paul told Timothy, it's a mystery. It's a without controversy, it's a mystery that God manifested in the flesh. And and when you were born of your mother and father, you get your blood from your father. You may be a spit in the image of your mother, that may be your case, but you got your blood from your father. God, Jesus got his blood from his father. That means it wasn't tainted like Adam's. It wasn't tainted like ours. Can you say amen? And so it's precious. And I think it's even uh, talks about we trample the blood of Jesus under feet. When we openly and willfully sin after we've been redeemed. And so, you know, we, we have to be very careful. When we think about, when we talk about, and when we apply the blood of Jesus. Amen. 
Now let's go to Acts chapter 20. If you're taking notes, if I'm going too fast, tell me to slow down. I've been told that I go too fast sometimes. Acts 20, verse 28, we'll start there. Acts 20 and 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Hath, that's past tense. God's already done it. You know, I tell you, we, we like I say, I, I didn't corn this uh, come up with this phrase. I, I learned it from reading a lot from Hagen. Uh, but Hagen would say, the problem, much of the church has been religiously brainwashed instead of New Testament taught. And we people pray and, you know, asking God to do this, do this about certain things. Listen, especially praying, you know, about the devil. Jesus did everything that he's going to do for you and I. He left it up to you and I. He, when he died on the cross... And when he gave his life, he was buried and rose from the dead and sat down at the right hand of the Father. He done everything he's going to do. He left it up to you and I to do now. So if anything's going to be done with the devil, it's going to be you and I. That's why I said if anything gets done with this virus, it's going to be the church. Ain't no sense in us praying to God, God, take this virus out of the land. He gave you and I authority. Did he not? Either he did or he didn't. He said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. But he purchased us with his own blood. Glory to God. I mean, that's precious right there. That God so loved you and I. The blood of Jesus is precious because it has cleansing power. Amen. 1 John 1.7 says this. But if we walk in the light... As he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, you know, listen, I, I, I don't really fit in a Calvinist a doctrine, and I really don't fit in an Armenian doctrine. I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle. You know, I don't believe you can get saved and live like hell and expect everything to be all right. But at the same time, I don't believe you can just slip up and, and make a failure and that automatically puts you in hell. I believe there's a balance, and I believe the balance is right here. Walking in the light as he is in the light. Walking with Jesus. And if you are walking with Jesus, don't mean you won't sin. You might, but you're going to do what the, you, well, go down to verse number 9. You'll confess your sins, and he will be faithful and just to forgive you those sins and to cleanse you, how? With his precious blood. It takes walking with Christ. You know, I've heard, it's sad, I know too many people that really believe this, or at least they tell me they do. I, I don't, I'm not sure if they do or not. You know, they say, well, God's forgiven me of everything, I, my past and my future sins. No, there's atonement for your future sins. But you, when you get involved in sin, you're going to have to do something about it. That means you're out of fellowship when you're in sin. How do I know that? Well, go, I mean, my God, go back to the garden. Adam and Eve sinned. They were out of fellowship with God. And what did he do? Like I say, they tried their own little get up. It didn't work. So, and like I say, I, most people heard me say this. God goes and he gets two animals, and I, I can almost assure you they were lambs. And he comes back and he slaughters those, those animals there in front of an Adam and Eve, and they'd never seen nothing die before. They'd never seen blood before. They're seeing something for the first time they'd never saw something die, something suffer. And now they're seeing blood. 
And I believe God skins those lambs and he throws those bloody hides on Adam and Eve to cover them with the blood of the lamb. We see from the very beginning God's plan. See, that wasn't plan B. That was always the plan. G, the Bible says that God knew before the, he laid the foundations of the earth that Christ would die. Amen. So, you know, um, listen, I, no, there's no secret. I, I like contemporary worship, but I tell you, there's some of these hymns that we, we need to get back to. We need to sing about the blood again. We got to sing about the blood. You know, because well, the, the, the very what, what can what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make you whole again? Nothing. It ain't the blood plus. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. You ain't been too bad. You ain't backslid too far. It's all sin. Amen. There's only one sin you can't be forgiven for. And I'm going to tell you, you've not committed that sin or you wouldn't be here tonight. You could care less. Amen. Now, the devil tormented me with that as, as, a, as a child. That I'd blaspheme the Holy Ghost. The devil's a liar. Amen. If I'd have known what I know now, if I'd have done that, the devil wouldn't have, I wouldn't have cared. I'd never been a thought. Matter of fact, I'd been in self-denial that I did it. Amen. But all sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. It's not the blood of Jesus and water baptism. Although water baptism is very, very important. And if you're born again and you've never been baptized, you need to be baptized. It's not a suggestion. It's not something cool to do. It's not something just so we can say, I've been baptized. It is a commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ. He that believeth and is baptized, and is baptized. Peter says it this. We're talking about Peter. Peter said, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So, now, Revelation 1 and 5 says this. Turn over there. Revelation's easy to find. Just go to the back and work your way back over if you shot, overshot it. Revelation 1 and 5. And from Jesus Christ, whom is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, Think about that. Loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Hallelujah. That'll make Episcopalian shout. He did it. He did it himself with his own blood. So we're, the, we're, the word of God declares that you and I have a better covenant, according to Hebrews 8 and 6. Under the Old Covenant, the Old Testament law, it was the blood of animal sacrifice. Animals, they were, they were a picture, a shadow, a type of Jesus. Even as we read from 1 Peter uh, 1, 19, as of a lamb without spot and without blemish. But these, this blood only covered mankind's sin. It didn't cleanse the sin. What what I mean? Well, say for an example, we was painting this ceiling. We didn't have no carpet. And we painted the ceiling, and white paint got all over the subfloor. And we come in, we covered it up with carpet. You don't see it, but it's still there. It's just covered. But that's why John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He just wasn't going to cover it up. And the Old Testament was a cover-up. It was a cover-up job. Jesus come to take away the sin of the world. Amen. And he did. 
he accomplished the mission. Amen. He that knew no sin became sin that you and I could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's why this whole, we need to re- get out of this religious talk that we talk and think it sounds so humble, but really we're downgrading the Word of God and downgrading who we are in Christ when we get up and say, well, bless God, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. I get what you're saying. I, I get what you're saying, but if, you're, if you can't be a sinner and a saint at the same time, which one are you? If you're a saint, my God, just say what God said about you. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus. Nothing that you and I did, nothing you and I could do, but it was the precious blood of Jesus that pulled us out of the kingdom of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood. I said nothing but the blood of Jesus. This sacrificial system was only a shadow and a type. It was an example that would one day reveal the curtain would be pulled back and we would Jesus would reveal himself and he was a carrier of that blood. That's why John, this same John we've been talking about uh, cleansing ourselves, staying in fellowship. He also said, said there's three that bear record in the earth. There's three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there's three that bear record in the earth. The water, the Spirit, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Now check this out. Jesus coming down. He coming down and Jesus, uh, John sees him. And he gets into the water. John done declared, Behold the Lamb of God. Everybody knew exactly what John meant. He wasn't saying that the Lamb didn't have any value. It was the blood in the Lamb. Amen. He was talking about repentance, bringing fruits worthy of repentance. Jesus gets down in the water, declared the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. It wasn't the Lamb, it was the blood of the Lamb. And all of a sudden, here comes the Spirit of God. Here comes the Spirit of God in the shape of a dove and lights on Jesus. And all of a sudden, these three bear record. And a voice comes from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son. And whom I am well pleased. There are three that bear record in the earth. The water, the spirit, and the blood. Amen. Well, if that don't get you, Jesus hanging on the cross. Want to make sure Jesus is dead. And they stick a spear in his side. And what comes out? Blood and water flow. And one of the Roman soldiers standing by said, Surely, this was the Son of God. He didn't get that behave. That come from a revelation. He just didn't get that because, hey, that's pretty cool to say. He got that as a revelation that this was the Son of God. Amen. The precious blood of Jesus. This, the, these sacrificials didn't work. We, you and I, thank God, are under a better covenant with better promises. And you and I, you got to realize, you and I are, have the sin nature. And they had the same sin nature. But theirs was just covered up. But thank God. What makes this new covenant, one of, the, one of the things, there's many things, but one of the things that makes this covenant better that you and I have, the new covenant, better than the old, is He has washed us. He has cleansed us from all sin in His own blood. Let's look at it. Let's go to Hebrews Hebrews chapter 8. Is God good to you? Let's look at Hebrews 8 and we'll start at verse number 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. 
For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Now let's go over to verse 20. Let's go back. I'm sorry. Let's go back to chapter 7. And start at verse 25. Chapter 7 20, and verse 25. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost. That came unto God by him sin. He ever liveth to make an intercession for them. For such a high priest became us. Who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. And made higher than the heavens. Who needeth not daily as those high priests who offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people. For this he did once when he offered up himself. Those priests had to make things right for themselves. Matter of fact, if you know they were, their, their robe had bells in the, in the bottom of the robe. That way those outside and the in the inner court could hear him in there moving around. If he got real still and there wasn't no bells ringing, things got concerning. And I guarantee he kept moving, so he wanted to hear the bells ring himself. And when the bell stopped ringing and there was no ringing going on, there was a rope tied to him to pull him out. Why? Because he had the same sinful nature that you and I were born with. But our high priest... Our high priest, Jesus, he didn't have to make no provision for himself. He was able to walk into the holy of holies in the tabernacle in heaven. He didn't have to have no bells on his robe. He didn't have to have no rope tied to his leg. He walked into the holy of holies and laid his own blood on the mercy seat in heaven. His own blood one time. He didn't have to do it every day. He didn't have to make arrangements. He didn't have to go find a lamb or a goat or a bullock. He took his own blood one time into the holy of holies. My God, glory to God. I get excited about the blood because I know where I'd be without the blood. And I don't care how good you've been. There's a lot of people, my mama lived a good life, best I can tell, unless she had... Unless she lived a double life and I just didn't know about it. I don't, I've never seen my mama smoke a cigarette. I've never seen my mama drink alcohol. I've, I've never seen my mama do a lot of things that, that I found myself doing. But she still had to be born again. She still had to be redeemed. She was still as lost as I was, amen. And I want to tell you something right now. Don't, don't, you could be the one to bring your whole family to Christ. Amen. Don't, don't give up on your family. Don't give up. I can remember going to church some as a kid. Todd's grandfather, my grandfather, both, they played music. At Glen Lily, and we'd go from time to time. And, uh, but you know, that's why you got to stay in fellowship. That's what John said. And I can remember sitting in a Bible study in, a, in my home one night. My mama was there. And the scripture said, Let each man examine his own self. That was all I taught on. My mama made things right with the Lord that night. My mama started coming to church. We don't see me, we don't talk much about holy rollers anymore. But my mama, when she got baptized in the Holy Ghost, she brought the holy roller back to the church 
because she rolled all up and down that floor right there. Almost from one end to the other. Can you say amen? What I say that, not to brag on me or my mama, but I'm telling you, don't give up. You might be the one. Now my niece is in church. Amen. You know they got to be a God. My niece shows up in church. No, just playing. But God's good. And he wants your family to be saved more than you want them to be saved. Amen. Just don't think because, well, my mama's a good mama. My daddy's a good daddy. Don't, don't count on that. Amen. Make sure they're born again. And don't let your mama tell you you're saved. Don't let the pastor tell you you're saved. You need to know yourself. Amen. And when you get it, you'll know. His spirit bears record with our spirit that we are a child of God. Amen. I didn't have to have nobody tell me. I couldn't, maybe I couldn't tell you what all had happened. I could tell you I was born again. That's about all I knew. But thank God I knew it. Amen. Are we still in Hebrews? Let's go to verse 11 in chapter 9. 9 11. Chapter 9, verse 11. But Christ, being come a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, this is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. He entered in once into the holy place, having attained eternal redemption for us. Not for himself, for us. Verse 13, for it is the blood of for if the blood of bulls and of goats and of ashes and of heifers sprinkling the unclean sanctified the, to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Jesus, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? To serve the living God. It's the blood of Jesus is precious because it cleansed you and I from the filth of this flesh. Amen. It redeemed you and I. You and I were a mess. We were tore up from the floor up. I mean, we were a hot mess in sin. Amen. And Jesus cleansed you and I. And not only did he cleanse you and I, we became brand new creatures in Christ. Now, let's look at this First John 1, 7 again. But if we walk in the light, is he in the light? We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Now, listen. John ain't writing to sinners. He said, but if we, he talking to the church. If we walk in the light. Lost people can't walk in the light. He's talking to you and I. So apparently you and I cannot walk in the light. Once again, sinners can't. That's why they need to be saved. There's a danger when you and I decide not to have fellowship with other believers. Now, it's probably better than it's been in times past. But I assure you, there's still people that won't fellowship with certain people because of a brand that they have or, or don't have. And you're out of fellowship. And that's not good. It don't do you and I no good as believers to run down our brothers and sisters of a different denomination, a different faith, a different church. It don't do, it don't do us a bit of good and it don't do the heathen any good. That just proves them that we are everything they believe we are. A bunch of two-faced hypocrites. That's what they think of us. You do know that, right? Well, let's don't prove them to be right. I say this, you know, I'm telling you, you mark her down. Next time that we have the community Thanksgiving service here, I ain't letting churches sit together. You're going to sit by somebody you don't go to church with. 
Amen. My God. Because if we don't do it, it ain't going to get done. And listen, I ain't trying. I'm just bringing out stuff just to be real. We, we can talk here, can't we? We can just talk about it. And you, you see, and, and you know, I love these people. But it bothers me, folks. And because I know there's a danger. It's the blood of Jesus, the flow. And you get up and each church has their singing group and every one of them's got people that are talented and gifted and anointed to minister. But if it ain't your church singing, I think i got to go to the bathroom. But when your church gets up, hallelujah, be clapping your hands. If, if your church claps your hands, if they don't do that, It's a truth. It sound, it's funny to think about, but it's a truth and it's a sad reality. But I can tell you this. You say, well, we don't believe in that clapping our hands. We don't believe in lifting our hands. Well, read the Bible. And I'll tell you this. Heaven's going to be a noisy place. There's going to be a lot of hand clapping. There's going to be a lot of running. There's going to be a lot of just sitting still. And awe of God. We're going to be overwhelmed by His glory. I just wonder, is he, you reckon He'll take us into the tabernacle and let us see where He put His blood? It's still there. Glory to God. And you and I have to be very careful to not get out of fellowship. And we know there's going to be a falling away. The Scripture talks about that. And, and I'll tell you, I believe we're in it. I believe we're there. And, you know, maybe the result of having churches closed has brought some of it on. But I'm going to tell you, people that love God, they're going to come to church if they have to sit in the parking lot, if they have to watch it on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, whatever. They're, they're going to be faithful. And they're not going to watch on Facebook Live Put it down the little corners, keep scrolling Facebook. They're going to be, I ain't trying to meddle in nobody's business, but I'm just telling you, you're not going to do that. Amen, it's the truth. The people of God, we must get into true fellowship. You know, I'm, because there is, no, it's the, the whole cleansing, the blood of Jesus and the fellowship and walking in light as he is in the light and the blood of Jesus cleanses my all of sin. But we know there's power in unity. The devil hates unity. And if he can just get us off on these little bitty tangents that don't mount to anything a whole lot, come on. We're better than that, folks. We got the same daddy. Amen. And so, we should never, ever break fellowship with Christ, our brothers and sisters. And we should always be prepared. Now listen, when you, you and I are to be defenders of the faith, contender. We're to contend for the faith. And you and I should defend our brothers and sisters when they're being put down. And you might have some brothers and sisters in Christ that ain't living right, ain't doing right. And we don't condone that, and we don't uphold them in that. But bless God, we're not going to let somebody talk about them either. We've all had some black sheep family members. You could talk about them if you wanted to, but couldn't nobody else talk about them. Amen. So there's too many of these bless me clubs. Our little cliques, our little groups. I mean, most of everybody in this room has been on the mass walk before. You see the same thing there. I'm like, good night. I think we should quit talking about what walk number we went on. That's, that's bringing a click. I'm on walk for, oh, well, you walk 142. I was on walk 42. I mean, really. I can, I mean, amen. Let's just rejoice in who Jesus is and get away from these 
bless me clubs and these little clicks. But we act like we're playing football. Everybody in their own little huddle. My God, stop it. And when you do that, you're out of fellowship. We got a big family. And they claim everybody else is out of fellowship. That's right. You know how I know? You let, you let her, you let her, and, I, and you know, I just make it a practice. But you let a revival break out in any church here in this community, and you see how many other churches support it. You'll find out. You'll find out if you're in fellowship or not. Let me ask you this. Would you be jealous if a revival broke out in another church? Would you would you be jealous if people were getting saved, getting healed in another church? Something to think about. Because really deep down, if we really answer that honestly, men would have, have to say, maybe. No, we wouldn't admit it, obviously. I mean, we... We wouldn't do that, but in our heart. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Now, we all make mistakes. We all mess up. you got to remember, your body did not get redeemed. Your spirit, man, man is triune, man is a spirit. He has a soul, and he lives in a physical body. Your body did not get saved. Your soul didn't get saved. I know we use that terminology a lot, but your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, your thinking process, and it does not get born again. It has to be renewed, according to Romans. <clears throat> you don't conform to this world, but you be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do I know? How do I know man is triune? Well, because Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I pray the very God of peace, sanctify you holy spirit soul and body god's triune is he not are we not made in the likeness and image of god well how in the world are we made in the likeness and image of god god is a spirit man is a spirit when you got born again it was your spirit that was born again your your mind and your flesh didn't get saved amen that's why many times you end up tr you trying yourself being tempted by the same old thing. The Hebrews talk about the sin that so easily besets us. One that trips us up. But we need to move on. Get on the blood of Jesus. Stay in fellowship. Be cleansed and stay cleansed. Amen. If you do mess up, if you sin, thank God we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. But that continual cleansing comes as we walk in the light. And sometimes we miss it and don't even realize it. But if we stay in fellowship, we walk in the light. Last week, you remember I talked about Hezekiah. When I, Isaac told him, he said, get your house in order. You're going to die. He turned his face to the wall and began to pray. And he reminded God how he, what he'd done. And he, he lived, he had a perfect heart. Well, of course, obviously he didn't have a perfect heart. He didn't, and you and I don't either. But he had a heart toward God. You and I may mess up. But just because you fail, don't make you a failure. It means you sin. And you can get back right and covenant with God. The precious blood of Jesus. Let's go to Colossians. I'm not going to get done. Colossians. Chapter 1, verse 20. Colossians 1, in verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross... By him to reconcile all things unto himself. 
by him. I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. First, the blood of Jesus, it pacified the broken law. You, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, according to Romans 3 and 23. But through the blood of Jesus, Jesus cross, God made peace, reconciling all things to himself. God did it. Amen. Second, the blood of Jesus pacifies our guilty conscience. Now listen, if you have a guilty conscience... Romans says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. If you're walking in the Spirit, you're not going to be feeling condemnation. Amen. If you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. This whole mindset, we all got to sin every day, and we can't help it tells me that we can't follow the Bible and walk in the Spirit. The Jesus said, the Scripture said, Jesus didn't say, but the Scripture said, walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the blood of Jesus walking in fellowship, it pacifies or cleanses our guilty conscience. And, and so many Christians go around and they magnify sin. All they talk about is sin. Amen. Now listen, we don't water down sin. We preach sin. But that ain't, you can't just preach sin to people that are born again all the time. Amen. Because then you walk around the sin conscience. Especially, like I say, when many people have been taught they got to sin, they can't help it. They're always thinking about, I'm going to sin. I got to sin sometime today. I just don't know when, but at some time today, I'm going to sin. No, you might sin, but you don't have to. If you sin, it's because you yielded to the temptation. Now let's go back to Hebrews. He did it. He pacified. He drawed himself to us. Now let's go back to Hebrews 10. Let's just read this together and I'll try to close here. Hebrews chapter 10 and we'll read verses 1 all the way through 22. A better covenant with better promises. Hebrews 10, verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers therefore unto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sin. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he, Jesus, cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above when he saith sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not, neither hast pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do the will, O God. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every high and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes same sacrifices which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered once sacrifice for sins forever, Set down the right hand of God, from henceforth ex expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Glory to God. Wherefore the Holy Ghost also is witness to us. For after that he had said before, 
This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and into their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Verse 18, now, where remission of these of this is there no more offering for sin. Having therefore, every time you see therefore, what's it there for? Brethren, boldness. To enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By new and living way which hath consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience and our bodies Washed with pure water. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It's precious because it pacifies power. It pacifies the broken law. And it pacifies our guilty conscience. It reconciled you and I to God the Father. In Ephesians 2 and 13 it says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes were afar off are made nigh. How? By the blood of Christ. My God, the scripture's full. This is a bloody religion. Amen. And we must not never be ashamed of the blood of Jesus. We should never be ashamed to preach the blood of Jesus. We should never be ashamed to sing about the blood of Jesus. Yes, this is religion, if I can say it like that, which I don't like to say. But this is a faith built on the blood. And not just any blood, but the blood of Jesus Christ. As of a lamb without spot and without blemish. Amen. And it all starts with the blood. Having faith in that blood. We preach and teach a lot of faith, but your faith is not going to do you any good till you start with the blood. Amen. There's where your faith begins. You are saved by the grace of God through faith. What grace? The grace that He displayed by giving Him His life. You and I didn't earn it, don't deserve it, but He loved us and gave Himself and redeemed us with his precious blood. Can you say amen? And therefore, you and I can have boldness to enter into the holiest of holies. How? By the blood of Jesus. you got to remember, before it was only the high priest of Israel that could do the bidding. It was only him that could go into the most holy place. But you and I, because we've been washed in the blood of Jesus, we can enter into the holy holies. We can enter in by the blood of the Lamb. We can walk right into the very throne room of God without shame, without hunkering down, but we can go into the throne room boldly. Because of the blood of Jesus, you and I are robed in a robe of righteousness. Because we've been washed in the blood of Jesus. We sang that song, Have You Been Washed in the Blood? Have you been washed in the blood? Let me read you one more verse. Isaiah 43 and 25 says, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake. And I will not remember thy sins. He doesn't remember them. And if you're feeling guilty, quit going to God and confessing stuff that he's, he don't even know what you're talking about. Don't go confessing stuff that God's done. He's going, what are you talking about? If God says he don't remember it, I believe God don't remember it. Can you say amen? He said, I'll blot it out and I'll remember it no more. Don't let somebody else bring it up to you. If they do say, so, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, yeah, you do. You was there. I don't know what you're talking about. You may be talking about that old guy. Now, he probably did something like that. I wouldn't put past anything by him. There's probably stuff that he did that you don't even know. But I don't know what you're talking about. See, I'm a new creature in Christ by the blood of the Lamb. I don't know what you're talking about. 
Thank God that we can be washed. And it's nothing but the blood of Jesus. It's not religion. It's not by works. At least any man should boast. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There's power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus is precious because it's overcome. In Revelation 12, 11, I got two minutes. Revelation 12, 11 says, And they overcame him, him talking about the devil, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. The word of their testimony, their confession. What the mouth confession is made unto. We overcome. You and I can overcome. We are overcomers. We overcome Him by the blood of the Lamb. We got to get to the place to where Jesus called you and I to be. Overcomers. But you can't overcome talking defeat, singing a hee-haw gospel, bloom, despair, and agony on me. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Bloom, despair, and agony on me. You ain't going to overcome nothing. You're going to stay defeated. No, you've been washed in the blood. Begin to say what God says. And you can overcome. And then you won't love your life. Because your life's hid in Christ. This blood causes you to overcome the power of the world, the power of the devil, the power of death. There's power in the blood. There's power in the precious blood of Jesus. That's why we can tell the world that this blood is precious. We should never forget about the blood, church. We should never quit telling about the blood. It's not an old topic. It's not a topic that's outdated. It is the topic for the church. Had it not been for the blood. Let's stand together.